Hey guys, welcome to Brit Indians. I'm Joshua. So in this video, we are going to look into what are the banks that are out there, uh, which banks to choose, and uh, based on my personal experience, what banks do I use? Uh, I will let you know all these things in detail in this video, like how to apply for the you know for opening an account uh, in the UK. What are the accounts that you can open in the UK? So these are the things that we will look into in this video. So let's get into the video. Before moving on to the video, I'd like to thank UniEcho for sponsoring this video. UniEcho is a student accommodation provider in the UK and also in 10 more countries. They are headquartered in India with a strong presence in UK, Australia, US and beyond. UniEcho has a track record of guaranteeing that students find their perfect home. Their properties are located in student-friendly cities close to prestigious universities which makes students' lives easier. They have around 1 million users. They have a wide range of room options varying from studio, on-suit, non-on-suit, twin studio, etc. They have a very good rating and review from their former students. You can click the link in the description which will take you to the page where you can choose the country in which you want to find the student accommodation and you can select the city where you want to find an accommodation and then you can choose your universities or you can type whichever universities you want and then you can select your move-in date and then you can select the weeks, number of weeks you want the accommodation and then you want you can select your budget and then you can select uh, whichever room you want you can type your name in and then your email address your phone number and your preferred time slot so within next one to two hours you will receive a whatsapp message or an email from an expert who will help you throughout the process of finding a, a good accommodation in the city where you want to live in they will help you compare across different properties and choose the best one for you if you are looking out for student accommodation in any of these countries then do check out UniEcho. there are two types of banks so one is the physical bank and another one is the mobile banking uh, so the physical banks are like the banks that are uh, out there they have a building and you can go and ask them if you have any questions or any, anything uh, but for, uh, mobile banks or banks that are on your mobile, like an app, like PayPal and stuff. But uh, but it's like a, a bank, but then it, they don't have an office or anything. Uh, physical uh, mobile banks are becoming very uh, famous in the UK. I will let you know about uh, what are the mobile banks that are available in the UK and which one you can uh, open uh, in the end of the video. Uh, first, we will look into the physical banks. In order to open an account uh, in a physical bank, you need uh, you know your passport. Uh, your uh, BRP card and then you need a letter from the university if you are studying uh, in the university uh, saying that you are a student in the university. So these are the three things that you need in order to open an account if you are an international student in the UK. Uh, if you are coming as a family uh, then you need your passport, your BRP and then any of your utility bill or your accommodation contract. Uh, in order to open a bank account in the UK. So let's look into the physical banks. So the first one is uh, NatWest. Uh, so in NatWest, you can open an everyday current account. Uh, so in the UK, you can open a current account. Uh, so in, you know, in India or some other countries, you don't usually open a current account. Uh, you use a, a savings account but in UK uh, it's quite the opposite uh, everyone opens a current account so that's the easy account that you can open uh, so in Atwest it's the everyday current account uh, there are no monthly charges it's free um, you may be eligible for up to 500 pounds of overdraft limit uh, subject to eligibility and uh, for international payments uh, for example, if you are receiving payment from abroad into your NatWest account, uh, you have to uh, pay seven pounds. And if you are uh, sending money to abroad, um, uh, so this abroad is except EU. So uh, whatever international payments I'm discussing is except EU because for EU it's free. Uh, but if you are sending outside of EU, uh, for example, to India or to Dubai or to Pakistan or wherever you are from, uh, then you need to pay um, a 15 pounds charge for an immediate service and for a normal service uh, you don't have to pay so the normal service is around two to four days so it's free so second one is royal bank of scotland so royal bank of scotland and natwest are the same banks uh, the royal bank of scotland acquired not natwest um, you know like uh, i think four or five years back uh, so they also have an everyday bank account um, it is also a current account and they don't have any monthly fees 
the overdraft limit is up to 500 pounds subject to eligibility uh, it's also the same rate for uh, for the international payment uh, for uh, sending money uh, from india to your royal bank of scotland account you have to pay 7 pounds uh, for sending money from uh, royal bank of scotland to india uh, it's free if it's a normal service if it's a fast service then you have to pay 15 pounds next is uh, barclays so barclays bank account you can open as a uh, sole account or a joint account um so it's a free and uh, you, you, you are eligible up to 1000 pounds of overdraft uh from if you want to receive payments from abroad you have to pay 6 uh, pounds Uh, so that's for every transaction for example uh, you are receiving 2000 pounds from india then they will deduct 6 pounds from it so it's um, for every transaction not monthly one so from india if you are uh, for abroad from abroad if you are receiving money then it's 6 pounds if you are sending money to uh, abroad then uh, it's free Uh, through Barclays Banking. Next is the HSBC. So HSBC has a student account. So it's called International Student Bank Account, or you can use the standard current account if you are uh, as a coming as a dependent or someone. Um, it's free to use. There are no overdraft available for it. Uh, if you want to receive money from abroad, you have to pay eight pounds for every transaction. Uh, if you want to send money to abroad, you have to pay four pounds for every transaction. Uh, there are cashback available on selected retailers if you are using their cards santander uh, in santander it's the basic current account uh, it's free to use and uh, if you are uh, receiving money from abroad it's uh, free and if you are sending money to abroad uh, it's cost you around 25 pounds nationwide uh, it's uh, they have the flex account uh, it's free to use and if you are sending money uh, to india or to abroad Uh, it costs you around twenty pounds if you are receiving money from abroad. It's free. Next is uh, Lloyd's. Uh, in Lloyd's, uh, it's the classic current account. Uh, it's free to use. And then, um, f- uh, if you want to receive money from abroad, uh, it's free. If you want to send money to abroad, it costs you around twenty pounds. Um, and also, they uh, get up to uh, you can get up to fifteen percent ca- cashback when you are using their Visa debit card on selected retailers. Next is Halifax. So Halifax, uh, they have the basic current account. Uh, it's also free to use. And if you are receiving money from uh, abroad, it uh, costs you around seven pounds per transaction. And if you are sending money to abroad, it's cost you around twenty pounds per transaction. and also you can get up to 15% cashback when you are using their visa debit card on selected retailers finally it's the tsb bank uh, they have the spend and save current account uh, it's free to use and um, if you are receiving money from abroad you have to pay 7 pounds for every transaction if you are sending money to abroad you have to pay 20 pounds per transaction and uh, you, uh, you can also earn 2.5% interest on their savings so these are the physical uh, banks these are the major physical banks uh, in the uk and there are other banks like uh, tesco uh, sainsbury um, um and metro bank uh, but these are the major ones uh, available in the uk um now we will look into the mobile banks so mobile banks are banks that are on your mobile so you can just uh, download their apps and and you can log in and you can uh, create an account for you it just take uh, you know it will create an account in minutes and you will get your uh, debit card uh, uh, you know like in one or two days so it's uh, quite easy so most of the people use that and also uh, you know mobile banks are quite flexible and easy to use and easy to manage so most of the people like uh, like me i use mobile banks all the day all the time and even nowadays everyone like students or working professional they are changing to mobile banks so i'll talk about two of the major mobile banks in uk one is monzo and another one is sterling so monzo uh, you can open a current account uh, and it's free to use so if you want to deposit any money then you have to go to a pay point uh, a shop and you can deposit up to 300 pounds at a single time and it cost you around 1 pound to deposit so if you deposit 300 pounds you will get 299 pounds in your account and uh, the international payments so in monzo this feature is not reliable yet your money is protected up to 85000 pounds by fscs uh, so next one is the starling bank account uh so it's uh, also has the current account and it's free to use and uh you can uh, receive uh, money in sterling uh, and it's free 
so you don't have to pay for any transaction that, uh, that for uh, for the money that you're uh, getting inside the Starling bank from uh, abroad. So in Starling, also your money is protected up to 85,000 by FSCS. So uh, the main um, advantage of Starling and Monzo is that uh, you can uh, pay, uh, for example, if you're uh, going a trip in Europe or US, you can pay you can pay uh, in the uh, card and it doesn't charge you any transaction fees for example every other card uh, charges for a non uh, uk pound transaction they charge you around 2.75 percent but in monzo and starling it doesn't charge you so for example if one euro is uh, you know 1.2 pounds then it will charge it will uh, if you pay one euro you will only be detected for 1.2 pounds you won't be detected more than that uh, so that's how Monzo and Starling uh, stays ahead in the race and also their app is very flexible it's quite easy to use uh, and you can manage your uh, spending and you can open savings part which will give you 2.5 percent of savings uh, for your um, uh, savings in the account so these are some some of the advantages of using Mo Monzo and Starling and there are other mobile banks um, like Moniz, Revolut uh, so you can use them as well um, so personally what I'm using is I started with Barclays as a student uh, and then when Monzo was launched in 2018 I started to use Monzo and uh, it was like my everyday account so I whatever money I'm receiving or depositing I will get it in Barclays and then I use Monzo for my everyday transaction and I opened a Starling account I was using it for quite a while but now I closed it I'm only using Monzo um, and then uh, after a few days, I, after a few years, I started using NatWest. So NatWest is my um, salary account. So in NatWest, uh, it has a rewards current account. So in rewards current account, if you're receiving salary, uh, then it's quite, uh, it's a benefit for you. So even uh, um, bar, uh, you know, um, Royal Bank of Scotland has the same one and a few other banks has it. So compare the rewards account. So rewards account is beneficial for you if you're receiving salary every month of up to like 1,250 or 2,000 pounds, uh, then you can um, get it in that uh, bank. And so they give you some uh, rewards and uh, you can, for example, uh, they will pay you like four pounds every month for using the account and then they uh, also give you a credit card and then they give you some cash back like one percent or two percent for uh, for using it in every retail shops so these are some of the benefits of using um, rewards account so if you are getting monthly salary or something then you can look into getting rewards account in any of the uh, banks that i mentioned above so you will have this question like what is the uh, top bank or what is the best bank so um, um, you know there is a, a private website which uh, usually publishes this data so you can uh, see it on the screen so for overall service quality Starling and Monzo are the number one as I said it's quite easy to use and also uh, if you have any problem you can just chat there and they will resolve it um, I have done a lot of um, um, you know uh, I don't have to go to a bank to wait in the queue or call someone to solve my issues I can just chat on the app and I can resolve it so it was quite easy and that's why I'm using Monzo for my everyday banking you can see that um, um, you know there isn't much difference between other banks uh, like um, uh, you know Nationwide, Halifax, uh, Barclays, Lloyds you can use any of the banks I, uh, for physical banks i want i wouldn't say you have to use this but if you're uh, going to get a rewards account then only few banks are giving this rewards account so um, you know research about it and find out which one is suitable for you and then for online mo and mobile banking services it's again starling and monzo are the top and then other banks are coming below i, I wouldn't say you know this bank is better than that and that bank is better than this so personally i use barclays and natwest both of them are good both of them have the same service but all of them are uh, reliable um, and my friends are using halifax lloyd's bank and everyone every bank is good so um, it's it's up to you to decide what bank you have to use uh, but i would say have a physical bank and also a mobile bank so for mobile bank monzo or starling are the best ones so if you are having a mobile bank, it's quite easy, quite flexible, quite easy, uh, you know, reliable to use as well. I hope this video is useful for you. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, just leave it in the comment section of the video. Uh, and if you have any more queries, you can uh, message me on Instagram.
Instagram. If you like the video, hit the like button, share the videos and subscribe to the channel. We'll meet in the next video. Until then, goodbye. Cheers.